Welcome to Australian T-Trades Stories, where we shine a spotlight on the outstanding work of T-Trades in schools around Australia. In this series, we will be hearing from T-Trades who were recognised in the 2019 Australian T-Trade of the Year Awards and the school leaders who nominated them. My name is Stella Lillindahl and today I'm talking with Jackie Mengel, who is the 2019 Australian Tea Trade of the Year. Jackie was nominated by Anna Thorpe, Deputy Principal at Maribyrnong Primary School in the ACT. So Jackie, first of all, congratulations on being nominated the 2019 Australian Tea Trade of the Year. When we called you to announce that you had won during Australian Tea Trade Appreciation Week, was that the first you knew about your nomination? I had heard about the nomination, but certainly not how well I went. So, yes, it was a wonderful surprise. How does it feel to be Australian Tea Trade of the Year? Oh, you know, listening to you say it all in that sentence, it's still quite overwhelming because it's certainly an honour, but to think that it's Australia-wide certainly has made me feel very, very honoured and very appreciative of the journey that I've had here at Maribyrnong and over the years and the uh, wonderful children that I've certainly spent my days with. Oh, that's wonderful to hear and we'll certainly hear some more about some of those things that you do at your school. So, Jackie, what led you to become a teacher aide almost 15 years ago? Wow. I was working in uh, uh, childcare. I was working in childcare for quite a few years in the different settings. I was certainly doing a lot in that area. I had an. I probably uh, did a lot in to supporting children in in needs, and I was offered a position at a school where I could support children way back then, behaviour difficult difficulties and whatnot. So I, I guess I started the journey back then and, and that opened the door to where I am today. Okay, so, so you've been with the Learning Support Unit uh, since around 2002, is that right? Well, I came about, yeah, I came on about 2003, actually came over, over to the unit and I have been there ever since. I, I used to say that I would stay until they all graduate, but uh, obviously I get many more and, and I hang in there until they graduate, so it's certainly <laughs> something that I, I've had a... Yeah, I've been there for a long time and the reason I have been there for a long time is because each child that comes in to the unit certainly has made an impact and I, I, I want to make an impact for them and give them something that will help them and put them in for whatever their future may be. And so that sounds like that's really important to you. It's something you really love about what you do. You know, it is. If I um, I take each child as they come through the door, and they come through not with their disability or anything else. They come through the door with who they are, their name, and that's the first thing that I will greet in the morning. You know, their name and and everything else comes second second to to all those things. So if you celebrate the child walking through the door, you celebrate their name. That's going to put you um, ahead in leaps and bounds for a great day. So. I can tell you really put the child first, the child before everything Absolutely. else. Yeah. Indeed, yeah. indeed. So, Anna, you're currently the acting deputy principal at Maribyrnong, is that correct? That's correct, yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit a little bit about Maribyrnong School and where you're located? Yeah. So, we are a growing primary school. We're located in the north side of um, the ACT. We are, and when I say we're growing, when Jackie and I started here um, all those many years ago, I think we had about 150 students here at the school. And that's grown in its, both its population, its diversity of our population to about, we're enrolling about 620 students next year. So we're, we're a very quickly growing school. And the nature of where we're placed in the ACT means that we're also quite diverse in our nature. We're situated between two different universities. We have children that come through that university as the offspring of a variety of parents with lots of life experiences from all over the world. And so we are um, we're very, very inclusive in every respect of the word. 
and which is why Jackie is such a great asset to Maribyrnong because that's what she exemplifies in her practice. She's one of our most inclusive members of staff and she's a great role model to the students, uh, to our community, to anyone that comes through our school. So yeah, she's a great asset. So I think there's another conversation there, Jackie, just about being inclusive, but just just staying with you for a minute, Anna. You must have been really thrilled yeah. that Jackie's nomination was successful. Absolutely. So as I say, I've worked with Jackie for a long time. When I first arrived at school, I was a kindergarten teacher, and Jackie was one of the people that made me feel most welcome here. And she and I have worked together with a variety of different students over that time, and our roles have changed slightly. And so to actually see that being celebrated and to have the opportunity to celebrate that as well um, in a through a model that's purely about celebrating that practice of teachers' aids because what they do is such a gift to our community. To be able to do that through a really specified mechanism has been really, really good. Oh, that's wonderful to hear. And of course, we totally agree that it is just <laughs> a wonderful opportunity to be able to highlight the amazing yeah. work the tea trades do all around Australia, and this is such absolutely. a great um, vehicle for that. Absolutely, absolutely. And when we talk about teachers' aid, we talk about educators because that's who we all are. But I think what we acknowledge in our teachers' aids, especially, or in our learning support assistants, is the fact that they educate holistically. They educate the whole child, and that's what's been so wonderful to be able to celebrate in this case. And it's interesting, the word educate is fabulous and also learning support person. Mm. So, and of course, that is one of the dilemmas with being a teacher aide in Australia, that there are so many titles. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, and with each of those titles comes a different nuance of the role. And we, we at Maribyrnong really celebrate that actually who our learning support assistants are is a very defined role, but it's a really, really special role that actually teachers cannot often occupy that place. Um, you know, we're, we're there in a different kind of role. So again, because we're a, 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 an environment that celebrates diversity, to celebrate the diversity and the value of each of those roles is so important to us. Yeah, I, I totally agree. So Anna, I also wanted to ask you about um, Jackie's positive impact on student learning and achievement because in your nomination mm -hmm. you outlined so many different ways that Jackie has an impact on students at the school. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I will say, you know, Jackie will say that she works in one of our small group programs, but Jackie doesn't just work in one of our small group programs. Jackie's everywhere around our school. And <laughs> everybody celebrated when Jackie won that award because of the positive impact she has on our whole school community. Um, she uh, exemplifies what we try to work on at Maribyrnong, which is that we form really strong positive relationships. And everything that Jackie does, is about creating that strong attachment and that sense of belonging. So for the students in the learning support unit where she currently works, that sense of belonging and that sense of ownership that those students have in that space is down to how Jackie and her team, the team around her and the team with her, work with those students. But she also works across the school. So she's our so safe, our uh, safe and supportive schools officer. So Jackie works with all our students who might need support in, in their relationship building with each other, with staff members, and she's also a key member of our positive behaviour for learning team as well. So she's, she's got that view over the whole school, she talks about how we can ensure that our children with a disability have that sense of belonging and how our, all of our students have that sense of belonging across the whole school. And I really got the sense of that from your application, Jackie. And you know, I'd invite you to add anything to to what Anna said. But I also just wanted to perhaps point you into a couple of things you might like to elaborate on. As for example, uh, I believe you've had quite an impact on the literacy and numeracy outcomes of students that you work with. Yes, thank you. So, so it's really important when we look at the big academic picture of each child that we 
we make sure that each one can achieve at their own learning pace, at their own learning level. So we, we work really hard on modification to achieve those goals for individual children in the unit and outside the unit, um, giving them a self, you know, that self-satisfaction. Wow, look what you just did. Look, you know, all those kind of really important things to achieve that they're at their own pace, their academic gains as well. And you've also had, according to, to what Anna said, I'll use her words, you've increased community awareness of mental health issues. So, you know, mental health is an incredibly important thing. And I heard Anna saying, you know, belonging comes first, basically. So, you know, and you said about greeting students by name first. So all of that well-being stuff happens before the learning happens. So. Sure. Um, you know, it all does begin with how you uh, walk in the door and how they walk in the door and who they see it. And you are one of their main people that they will spend many hours with each day, each week. And you are the one that will make an impact on their lives. So how does that's a huge, huge thing to take on. So how does that impact that child? By sure, you celebrate them any chance you get. Celebrate them with making sure you know their name. Celebrate them with achievements. Celebrate them with turning tricky things around and, and you know, getting through that. It's, I believe that if we have moments of celebration of each child through the day, that's going to add to their own mental health as they grow older too. Anna, I can tell why you said that Jackie is passionate about what she does. I just love the way <laughs> your passion is coming across. And also, uh, there are so many things I could ask you. Uh, perhaps something that would be really interesting is about how you work with so many different services, that multidisciplinary approach to make sure students get the kind of um, support that they need. So for so my role in that, certainly uh, any game would be to know your child, absolutely, but to also use it, take it, create a big picture for that child and what that big picture looks like is, is lots of little different, uh, a big umbrella and we're all, we're all part of that big umbrella for that child. So those conversations, though, that journey with all the outside interventions, the other people that touch that child's life is so important and so valuable. So you make it a big, a big pot of, of information, share that information to, to put the best interest of that child first. And, and that's what is so important to, again, acknowledge everybody who has a little hand in, in shaping that child's future. Jackie and Anna, probably both of you provided some wonderful mm. photographs. Do you want to talk about the photos that we can see at the moment? Sure. So um, I'm looking at when we had, I'm looking at the children with our assisted dog. So we had a, um, an outside group that brought in a dog at various times throughout a, a period of time. Now, for our children and the, that experience not only was such a, such a, a wonderful experience for the children, but certainly they had the, that moment that they may not have had an opportunity before to have that nurturing and caring and sharing and and and, and watching how to to work with the dogs and how the dogs will work with them and and you know learning the rules of care and 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 the safety of, of animals in their world. It was a really beautiful experience mm -hmm. and one that you know I would certainly repeat for all children. Mm. Mm -hmm. so that's that photo, yeah. And then there's also a beautiful one of Bubble Day. So every year Jackie celebrates Autism Awareness Day. Um, I think I don't. I think this is one from last year that yes. we did. We did Bubbles last year, and it's just a chance for the students to, you know, celebrate their own diversity and celebrate the the gifts that they've been given really in a really positive way. Absolutely and we certainly don't shy away from using any for an understanding so yes I, I do focus on your name and all those things and your seven and all that but we certainly acknowledge what some of the things that help us shape us and and we celebrate autism because a lot of obviously a lot in the children uh, children in the unit certainly have autism so mm -hmm. we, we use it as a celebration of who we are and having a day for that I mean we celebrate it every day but having an actual special day for that I think is a really important part for our children for all children. Mm -hmm. Yeah so important for all children to know they've got a place isn't it? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I can see in the background there's also a beautiful picture of uh, one of our students 
when we went to visit the uh, Boundless Playground. So Boundless is a beautiful playground in Canberra that's been built on universal design principles and there are so many parts of that playground that are, you know, accessible for every single one of those students in a different way. It's a beautifully designed space. So again, that was a, a an excursion where our students got to celebrate that environment and really uh, explore that together. Thank you. Now we have those pictures again. So um, they were so nice. I wanted to use them different ways. So Anna, I wanted to ask you about Jackie being an advocate for student well-being for the whole community. Yeah. yeah. Can you tell us about yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah, so um, a couple of years ago, our school started on the what was then called the Kids Matter journey. I think we're now um, part of the, something called BU. And that's a, a framework that um, brings in lots and lots of different perspectives on mental health, on advocacy for student well-being. And Jackie was part of our Kids Matter team, and she was part of looking at our school community, looking what we did really, really well looking at what we, where we could maximise and she was part of that journey where we developed the social emotional learning program for the students. Um, we looked at our school values and she's part of articulating those, not only to the whole community but also as part of making that appropriate to our students in our small group programs as well. So, you know, modifying the language of those programs, making it accessible, uh, really maximising on those parts of that social emotional learning program that really need are part of that social learning story that some of our students need. So mm -hmm. to have her as part of that conversation and here where we're, you know, where we think we're going as a school and then her to take that and look at the students in front of her and look at their individual needs and to use that framework to articulate for their needs has just been so powerful. Um, so there's never any sense that our students in the unit do something different to support their mental health or do something different to support their social and emotional learning because they're, you know, they're included in what we're doing. And often what we see actually is the reverse, that actually some of our students in the unit actually are showing some of our other students what they should be doing and articulating to them what responsibility looks like and articulate to them <laughs> Um, that's not respectful or, you know, that, that's inappropriate. Um, yeah. So we, you know, it, it's really powerful stuff um, to actually hear some of our students who should be our students that don't understand those social nuances actually are the people calling it out in, in, in the rest of us. So that's, that's, that's the impact that Jackie has. Wow, that was quite some eureka moments there when, when you hear that come out of of their mouth think wow they've really got it absolutely absolutely yeah. yeah so Jackie do you want to maybe give us an example of of you know like Anna said what was really interesting is you look at the child and you look at their needs in relation to the social emotional learning that you're trying to teach them through social stories or other ways but ha have you got an example of of something you did that sort of can exemplify what we're talking about here? Oh wow, with the many children I could have many examples. Um I think of I think of many, many things. I remember we have I had a student and I guess you shouldn't use names, but we can use his name. Jedi Liam. And the reason Liam presented in many different ways each day, but he certainly felt that he needed to be called as we saw it, Jedi Liam as he wanted to be now to be unknown. And I remember one time, and this is probably getting off track, we, we, got, we got to visit the Governor General and um, it was a, a very important moment for, for Liam to be introduced to, to the Governor General. And um, we went up, myself and Liam, and um, we, we, we shook her hand at the time and, and she, said, she said, I believe your name is Liam. And Henny said, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, ma'am, my name is Jedi Liam. I mean, that's not an example. That's just something that comes to mind when I think about making the, you know, the the world a place for all of us and, and how we can, I'm probably rambling a bit here, but what I'm trying to say is that we there's nothing that we cannot do. There's nothing that we cannot assist. There is mm -hmm. nothing that we cannot aid. 
to mm. help these children or all children find a place. Mm. And um, there's never, oh no, they can't do that. That's an absolutely something that I certainly don't say. Mm. There are, there, we just do things that we either do them a, a little bit differently and that's okay. And, and we celebrate all our differences. And one of the biggest things, and children will chant this for years, I think, and you know, everybody is different and, and different is okay. And these, mm -hmm. this is one of our big things. And one of the things that I've said to every child that I've ever had the opportunity to care for, um, over the years, how cool it is to be different. Mm -hmm. And, and we, and we certainly spend our time celebrating that. That is great. That's also a a motto of one of the anti-bullying programs, and, and I guess it comes from that. You know, dare to be different and and be proud of that. Yeah. So uh, it's a great yeah. message. Now, um, when I rang the school initially to congratulate you on your win, Jackie, your principal said that you would love to get that phone call because you'd had a really tough day. Your passion gets you through. There must be lots of challenges that you face. Oh, you know what, and I, I think one of the biggest things that I've learned in my roles over the years is, is never to judge the day and never to really label the day <laughs> in any way <laughs> um, and to just go with a every day. And I say this, you know, when when a child has a tough day, I'll say, well, let's look for the, the things that make, made you feel good in that day. Let's look for the things that we can celebrate. What is there a happy moment in your day or is something that, you know, that you did you turn something around that made you, you know, so I, I look like that as an educator, um, with, with staff and things like that on a tough day. And you can, you can be consumed by all those, those moments where, you know, everybody was spirited and you, you thought, oh my gosh, we're not getting through or, but every day, every day there is something that you can take and go, wow, actually, you know what? That happened. So I'm going to take that little bit of goodness because even though the rest was tough, I'll just I'll just take that little bit of goodness because I know that that made an impact and that helped. So that's what I look for every day. I think I need you to be my motivational coach, Jackie. <laughs> She's mine. You can't have her. <laughs> <laughs> Your philosophy is wonderful. I believe you collaborate with lots of external agencies, Jackie, and that you work. Well, I can tell from everything that's been said that you work across the whole school in teams. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I think children need a team to back them. Children need a team. So the strength comes from being a team player with with all your colleagues. And, and we, we work with many each day. So not only your internal uh, team in the unit, but your external outside, you know, the teachers in the mainstream building, you know, all your execs, your principals, you know the people in the canteen. So it has to be a big domino effect of shared responsibility, but it also has to be, you know, share each other's moments and share each other's and be be there back if they need it, you know, be there for each other. And that, you know, you're only as good as the team you work with. So that you work hard with your team and you celebrate them as well because your team turns up every day if they feel valued. So you let them know that they are valued and that works. That's a pretty cool photo of some kind of teamwork going on there, Jackie. <laughs> I have to tell you, so this is Jackie's extra special gift that she brings to Maravanon. <laughs> so Jackie is actually an Australian level sportswoman. She's an outrigger and she's represented Australia in, in that sport and in other sports previously. But that's the, ooh, that's the current sport. Um, so Jackie, bless her, does our warm up for all our sporting carnivals. And so this is her doing the warm-up for our cross-country this year. So you're not very talented, Jackie. Uh, you know, <laughs> I call myself a jack-of-all-trades, master of nothing, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Anna, was there anything else you wanted to say about uh, Jackie working with colleagues, or do you think we've said it all? Uh, look, I, I suppose Jackie's um, perspective on working with colleagues is exactly the same as her perspective as working with students. She gets to know each individual, she gets to know individual um, strengths, and she, yeah, she celebrates each individual, whether that be the individual who's our principal or the individual who's our building services officer. She, um, she celebrates all individuals. So. 
I think there's a lot of respect for Jackie and that's not just something that's been given out willy-nilly. It's, it's been well and truly earned because of this respect that she's shown everybody else. That's well said. So, Jackie, all these wonderful things that you do, uh, obviously there's an attitude there to have that positivity and inclusive approach to what you do, but how do you keep up to date with the skills and knowledge of your job? I'm a big believer in continued upgrading and how that would look. So uh, if I if I need to know something, I'll, I'll find out more. I, I will go to the source. I will go to, you know, I will look at the studies. I will do whatever is needed to put me in a place where I can make a comment or I can give an opinion or I can try something different with the children and that may work. So it's continuous. I don't think, I think everybody should be a student even if you've got many titles after your name. You, you treat each day like you're a student because you have to keep learning. If you don't keep learning, then I, I, I wonder why you would be in that position. So it's constant learning and, you know, you might know a lot, but how good it is that still every day you can keep learning. Yeah, yeah, we, we can certainly relate to that. That love of learning is really, really important. Uh, but more than you learning, Jackie, I read and I was impressed when I read that you have facilitated whole staff training in the So Safe program as well as Auslan. Can you tell us about that? Okay, well, I'll just, So Safe, I think, is a really important part of our, if you're looking at units and, and special ed children and whatnot and, and the practices and the things that they need with that So Safe learning but it was a I've been always in a great position where I've been able to to go out and do some professional learning in different areas and come back and share I, I'm a big believer you can't just keep it all in you have to share it and so I've always been very blessed with my execs and that who send me off on these things or I, I volunteer to go on them or I, I ask to go on them and then come back and, and share it if you don't share it how, how do we grow as a team so yes I've, I've done a couple of those, which has been really, really good. How have you learned your Auslan skills to the extent that you can now share them with staff? Okay, so Auslan is certainly, so again, time and every child is different. So each, so a few years ago, we that was needed more so with the children in my care. But again, everything's ongoing. So I have, yes, I have a bit of an Auslan background and I, I'm, I can use that on a daily basis if needed, when the verbal dialogue doesn't isn't needed. You know, there's some cues that for the children that I use every day when we don't need to have, you know, we can have that distant communication or, you know, we learn a few of those signs or a few of those things that's gonna, you know, help us help us out with what comes next. So yes, I continue to to share that with other staff as well. Great. And Anna, do you want to talk about the photo? Oh, so this is our positive behaviour for learning team. You can see Jackie there at the front, really enthusiastic. <laughs> She's always the first one to volunteer for anything that's about positive reinforcement of our students. So uh, this is a two-day training, I think, that we went on to begin that process of looking at our school, looking at our values, how we're going to articulate those in a really positive framework. Um, and you know, we're, we're working really hard. It's so easy to slip into negatives and do nots and don'ts. And so to have a whole team of people like that, of which Jackie is a part, affirming that positive language of, you know, this is what we do do, well done you for doing it, is really, really valuable for our school. And we're, we're very early on in that journey. Not that we're not a positive place, because I think we, we really are. But we're, we're trying to articulate that because we're a growing school and the things that we used to do naturally now need to be a little bit more um, outlined, I suppose, need to be a little bit more in black and white. So we just made sure that all the people who had those things to say were present. So, of course, Jackie was there. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that makes lots of sense too. Jackie, it's been an absolute privilege to hear about the wonderful work you do, not only with students and colleagues, but with the whole community. And I feel quite inspired from hearing in person about the many ways that you 
put into practice what you believe every day. It really is something inspirational that we can't wait to share with the greater Australian audience. But wow. Jackie, Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, it's such a wonderful, wonderful message to share. But do you have any advice or suggestions for other teacher aides who work with students with diverse needs? I probably could write a book on the, those kind of things, but I, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I guess I'd say never undervalue yourself and the importance of you in it, in that child's day mm -hmm. because it's these people these you know that they're a foundation for future so we are we are foundation for future so we we make sure that we do it well and we do it right and and those impacts that we make every day will leave in a lifelong impression so mm -hmm. yeah Yes, well said, Jackie. We never want to hear the words just a teacher aide or just a learning support never. assistant or just anything never. because that's not the right kind of value to attach to something so important. So, Anna, if you could sum up Jackie in a few words, if that's possible, what would you say about her? Oh, look, I think that would be very, very easy. I, I'm in the middle of my master's course at the moment and, read, and reading a lot of positive psychology, and I've just read a fantastic article um, about the heart of a teacher or the heart of an educator and um, the, the basic premise of the article was that you you teach who you are and I think that is genuinely who Jackie is you know she she comes to work every day she doesn't compromise who she is she brings who she is and that's who she teaches with she educates who she is and it's, it's such a wonderful asset for our community, and it's a wonderful asset um, to have in our yeah in our school, and, and the impact that that's had on a significant number of students, whether that those be directly in Jackie's care or you know in in, in classes around where Jackie's working, have all the benefit of, of who Jackie is, and, and we continue to, as she would say, celebrate that every day. What a wonderful way to, to close today's um, story about Jackie. It really has summed up what our chat has been about. So we hope you enjoyed listening to today's Australian Tea Trade story and was inspired by the valuable contribution Jackie makes to the learning and well-being of students and staff and the community of her school. Thank you for listening.